Mm. My mic sound nice, check one. My trim look nice, check two. My trim look nice, check three. David Ajala, are you ready? People are tuning into Black Car Speakers Lounge, Sunday, 5 o'clock, every Sunday, 5 p.m. How you feeling? How you all doing? That was my friend, my guy, David Ajala, up on the Star Trek Discovery. Yeah? And we're going to be having a conversation, an interview rather, with Mr. David Ajala. So stay tuned, everyone. We're going to bring him right into the room. Big superstar, Hollywood actor, Mr. Multi-talented David Ajala. Yo, yo, yo. Yes, big up. King. What's up, big up brother. Big up. A <laughs> long time. Long time, my brother. Absolutely. Long time. Real good to see you. Happy Sunday, bro. Happy Sunday, Sunday to you. Sunday. God bless Sunday to you, King, and to your family. Thank and you. all of yours, my brother. How you been feeling? How you been doing, man? Uh, not bad, bro. I literally, um, I, I flew in a few hours ago. Wow. Yeah. I literally just flew in. Wow. Dumped my um, suitcase. Had a little nap. Um, I'm going to have to yes. do a little bit. So I'm just, I'm still kind of just, um, Getting my bearings, and I know it's a bit Jet lag with like tier four lockdown and what have you. Oh so, man, tier four, bro. Tier four, yeah, mad thing, you. mad thing, mad thing, mad thing, brother. We were warned that you could join us, but you know, I want to tell everyone that David is the one of the most nicest guys I know that are in Hollywood, one of the most nicest actors I know, you know, That's and he's sharing, he, you're sharing your time with us, brother. Thank you, brother. and I can Pleasure. say this on and off the record. You're always there. You're always staying in touch, brother. You're so down to earth. I know they say Hugh Jackman is one of the nicest guys in Hollywood, bro. But I put him up. <laughs> I put you next to him, brother. You know, I put you <laughs> up there, bro. I have to big you up one time, brother. You know. Hey, appreciate the love, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. It's great to share love, man. It's great. Yeah, to man. I know. Say you're Arsenal supporter as well, bro. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't follow sports. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bro. So, what, 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 what was you working on a project in Canada? What, what was you up to in Canada, bro? Yes, yeah, so I was working on um, a new gig uh, that I'm doing at the moment, which is like super cool. So, I've been doing that for a bit, and then I'm back continuing it uh, next year. So, we're, we're just yes, on a break at the moment, which a lot of, of people course. are excited for. So um, I too am happy to kind of be kicking back for a little bit. And yes. I'm with the family. You know, you know how it is, man. Work I know how it is, brother. I play hard. Yeah, man. Definitely, definitely. So, King, I've been watching Star Trek Discovery. You know, I've been watching it, brother. And I must admit, I'm still going to keep, I've got to keep up to speed and all that, brother. So tell us, tell us about David Ajala's uh, journey and, and where you start, how you got into this screen acting and stage acting game. Rob, how did you get into it? And at what age, sir? Uh, so probably, um, I think it was at the age of like 13 in secondary school. Yeah. A friend of mine, and I remember his name, um, Jasvinder. Jasvinder Primus. Uh, big up all the Kingsland secondary school people. Um, so he was going to Anna Shears uh, during the summer holiday and he told me about it because he knew that I had an interest in acting. So, yes, sir. Um, he invited me to go along. I went to one of the classes. And I remember being in the um, auditorium with all these students and mm. seeing them, like, the way Anna Shears, the classes are set up, it's all about improvisation. So you wow. all sat down in the auditorium and then the teacher will maybe have two lines of dialogue and it'll put you in groups. Um, wow. Pairs. And then you're in pairs and you have a line each. So person A line might be... Um, I've waited long enough, I can't wait no more. And then person B, their line might be, please give me another chance. So wow. A line starts the scene, person B line finishes the scene. In the middle is improvisation. And to see all these actors going up on the stage and improvising, it was like a magic trick for me. It was mm. amazing. And that's why I kind of caught the acting bug. And then, you know, from there, I went to Anna Shears a bit more, went to college, went to drama school, and then mm -hmm. kind of built my way up. But my introduction to acting was definitely through improvisation and the theatre. Wow. Awesome. He loves, especially the theatre. Yeah, that's, 
What's the major difference between theater and screen acting, uh, acting on set or, uh, for a movie? What's the, what's, what's the major differences that you uh, see um, in those two animals, right. David? Yeah. Um, you know, it's actually a good question. And I think it's one that can easily be taken for granted sometimes. So for people who um, may not know the, the distinct differences between um, acting for camera and acting on stage, um, I'll, exp I'll explain it through experience. I find with acting on stage, when you're storytelling, every time you're storytelling with your whole body, the audience sees your whole body, nothing is hidden. Um, and let me just quickly pause you right there, my brother. Sorry, keep that point. This man, David Ajala, and I'm not just saying this because he's my friend, he was amazing, people, in one night in Miami, 2017, do more house. He's West End. David, tore it up, brother. You tore it up. Thank you, brother. I was, in, I was making up the most noise. In the, you, brother, you, I, brother, I was trying to be careful and hold it down because I didn't want to throw you off. And I know he's in the zone. I know he's in the zone, King. But you smashed it. You played uh, Jim Brown. Is that right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And it was Muhammad Ali, played by uh, Shofei Dizuri. That's right. Um, I'm touched, oh. Played by Renze Kenne. That's right. Um, Malcolm X, played by Francois Batiste. Yes, awesome, awesome, awesome. Big, 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 big show. I was heavily inspired by it. But brother, carry on, continue with no, the, uh, <laughs> what you were saying regarding the theatre and the difference with movies. I had to just throw that in there. Sorry, brother. No, that's all good, man. It's, it's, look, we're, we're flowing, man. It's all good. Yes, sir. So um, with um, acting for camera, I find one of the um, differences is at any one time you're using, you're concentrating your energy um, to be effective with your storytelling. So if the camera can see your full body, then when you're playing the scene, you can allow your full body to tell the story. If the camera is coming into a mid shot, then you know, the story exists within the mid shot. And then it gets closer and closer and closer. But just because the camera goes from there to there, it doesn't mean that your whole body shuts off. You should always keep your whole body engaged. You know? Yes. I think theater is like, um, if we're talking about a sculptor, creating um, uh, a, a, a statue of some sort. Uh, theatre would be like a sculptor using a chisel and a hammer to create mm. this piece of artwork. I think TV and film is using a laser to create the artwork. Right. That, that's how I would kind mm. of describe it. Love that analogy. Actually, I love that. But it's just, I think it's the, um, it, it's the attention to detail maybe I don't know, that you give one instead of the other. I, I don't know, but that's the best way I can explain it. A sculptor. Beautiful explanation. And then a laser. Beautiful analogy, brother. I love that. I love that. I love that. And people, David Ajal is, you can hear in his voice. His voice is as sexy as mine, people. <laughs> David Ajal. <laughs> <laughs> not, not sexy. Not sexy. I'm, I'm close, but it's not sexy. <laughs> 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 and David Ajala has been is a voice over acting. What's the differences with when you're in the booth doing your voice over acting for like brands such as Lynx or any other brand, Range Rover? I, brother, I recognize your voice straight away when I'm watching those TV commercials. And that's my boy right there. That's my boy right there, brother. You know. <laughs> so what's the, what's the differences? What's the various different? Uh, what's the differences basically when you're in the booth doing voiceovers for our audience listening? Um. Yes, I think maybe one of the when when you're in the voiceover booth and you're doing voiceovers, um, what I love about it is I can be wearing a tracksuit in the voiceover booth and then I'm doing a voiceover for I don't know um, Audi cars or for Range Rover or whatever. It's just, yes, it, it's it's storytelling, but it's just using your voice, and I love the freedom of it because there's something about the freedom of being able to do a voiceover that um, you don't have to worry about how you're looking, how your hair is, your this, your that, or the other. It's just always concentrated on the voice. And um, like, like I said, with theater, you do a lot of voice work. You do the voice work so that your instrument can be as effective as possible. Um, and I think the other thing with voiceover work, which is cool, is there's a lot more room to be creative and to think outside of the box. Like I could, 
my, my playing age, I don't know, is uh, I don't know, early 30s, mid 30s, or whatever. But they that's what he's like, yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you. But I can go into a booth and yeah, get over and you know, just flip it up and drop my voice an octave lower, and I sound like someone completely different. Cool, I, I, cool, I like cool. the fun of that. Yeah, man, it's, it's awesome. I've had the honor and the privilege of doing some voiceovers, like for a game called uh, Watch Dogs, um, which is out now on uh, PlayStation, and I've done various different things. And it, it, it's, you're using all the gestures and all the hands to bring out the tonations in your voice. And yeah. it, the salary is nice. And it's mm -hmm. a lot of actors, voiceover actors, are not necessarily known or famous, you know, but they, they earn a very good living from it, especially in this time where it's the pandemic, um, where it's social distancing, where uh, there's not so much work going on. There's no work going on on stage at all. You know, and our hearts go out to all the artists uh, who have gone through the suffering and everyone in general who's gone through uh, the suffering of the pandemic of 2020. And we mm -hmm. definitely pray for a better year for next year, brother. Maybe so, that. yeah, it, it's a blessing to be able to be working um, in this time. And there's so many facets to acting, stage, uh, documentary, voiceover. And there's so much to do now. There's YouTube, there's yeah. Vimeo. Um, there's so many platforms coming out. Uh, which are out now, which films have been released on those platforms. HBO, uh, Netflix, which you're on, uh, Apple, Disney, all of those different things. Yeah, Brother, man. yeah man. You, you played Manchester Black. Talking about <laughs> yeah. voices now. You've done that Manchurian accent, bruv. How did you, how do you master your, your accent? Brother, your American accent is perfect. It's suave, <laughs> suave, bruv. Suave, suave. How oh, did you get to master your various different accents for film and for voiceover? I think it's the American like, accent, but that, or even Manchester Black one, I should say. Right. Yeah. So if I, if we go with Manchester Black first, um, I've, having a good dialect coach is very helpful because they just have a better perspective on um, the sound, how you're meant to sound, how you naturally sound, and how you would sound if you were from somewhere in Manchester. So that helps a lot, listening a lot to different references. Um, so when, when I was like, prepping to uh, play Manchester Black, I listened to a lot of Bugsy Malone. Oh, okay. But, but yeah, and then I listened to Liam Gallagher quite a bit as well. So oh. Bugsy Malone, Liam Gallagher. Um, and I think there was a couple others, you know, because no accent is pure. Accents mm. are, you know, a melting pot of just various... Yeah, regional. Mm. It's like a fruit cocktail. I kind of mix in different sounds and then just try and find the right thing that sits well with my voice. Yes. I guess with American accents, um, we're exposed to a lot of American culture and American TV. I mm. up, sure, similar to yourself, we spoke about this Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I live in the household. My wife and kids, you know, so we see... And specifically, we see Black America to see what a Black American accent would sound like. Yes. And then, you know, if you become familiar with um, a Caucasian American accent. Um, yes. Uh, East Asian American accent, South Asian American accent. And yes. It goes on. But the thing is, all these accents mix one way or another. I sometimes come across, um, it's happened a few times where I've been in America and then I've been on the line and the guy behind me is speaking on the phone. Without even thinking about it, I'm thinking, oh man, yeah, he's um, he's a black guy just talking to his wife, or whatever. And I turn around, right. and there's a white guy, and <laughs> this is what I'm saying about accents, like they they, yeah, interchange, and it's it's all mixed and it melds quite a bit. So when right, you, you always want to find an accent that can be located somewhere real on the continent, um, to be precise. So when you hear mm. the oh that guy's from New York, oh that guy's from Boston. Oh, that guy's from Brooklyn. Like you know, Boston. Yeah. Like Boston. Yeah. Like Jersey. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's a whole different like, medley of accents. Um, so yes, that's what I always try and be specific when you're working on your American accent. Awesome. Awesome. So, brother, I'm looking at your uh, bio. And, man, your bio is awesome, brother. So I can do it from the top of my head. I don't even need IMDB. Yeah. So I know... You done uh, Kid Hood? Was that your first? That's my wow. first. Wow. And you had the people. You had the corn roll. You yeah, had the yeah, corn old roll. Old school. You know? I used to love it, man. I, used to love it. <laughs> I did. I did, man. Just um, 
It was it was just a I think it just felt that there was something quite empowering about me as a guy growing my hair out and growing it and braiding it, you know. And what was also great is how the industry and my agents embraced me with my braids. In fact, yes, I need to get more work. Very specific kind of work, but nonetheless it still allowed me to get work. So Kid Hood was like my first film, period. Awesome. And shout outs to No Clark. Oh um, yeah. Like he, he was the guy that pioneered it, man. You know, from kiddohood to adulthood to brotherhood. You know how did that go for He brought me along. Auditioned, called in for that. Yeah, I auditioned for it. Um and I remember doing the audition and, and um I was so embarrassing, my phone went off during the audition and like it it rang. And then everyone's going to ring for a bit and then it's going to stop. But then it kept ringing. I'm like, who is this person trying to call me? Like, you're killing me. <laughs> so in the middle of, because we were having group auditions where the camera's rolling and everyone's in the room together and we're all auditioning in front of the camera at different times. So I've had to sheepishly go over to my bag, my phone, and then, you know, turn it off. And then I remember I had a second audition for Kiddohood um, that same mm. week. And my phone went off again. And I thought, yeah, Oh, my God. Definitely. Was, oh was, my god! Was, that was my first time auditioning. I was new to everything. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, it, wow. It out, fortunately. So, brother, how is it? it I mean, I, I, we, we're very conscious of the time. Brother needs to get his rest. David needs to get his man. rest. Jet lag. And we're just very appreciative of your time, brother. That's so, it. it who like a, I guess this is a two-part question. Who were your actors or who are your actors? Who is the actor that you would look up to? Who's who's your favorite actor? Oh man, I have a few. I have a few. Yeah, but like, yeah. My, my in no particular order, like um Eddie Murphy, for sure. Well, you know what? You know what I've said about you and Eddie Murphy, innit? Awesome. You know what I've said about you and Eddie Murphy. Like, I said I you could play a <laughs> you can play I, people I told David Ajala you know what if they cast for a biopic of Eddie Murphy's life story yeah. David Ajala needs to play he's got that smile he's got the, <laughs> got the, the eyes and all that I think you still need to do a DNA test bro you know we don't need Jeremy Carr we need to do DNAancestry.com and see if the line runs in if you both come from the same yeah. tribe of the mobile land you know because you've got that look bro yeah, yeah. I mean, Eddie Murphy. I, I grew up on his movies, man, from Coming to America to The Golden Child to Beverly Hills Cop. You know, that was just, and I, I just love just seeing this guy and his confidence and just being so unapologetic and comfortable in his yeah. skin to just maneuver. There was something very attractive about that. Um, Jim Carrey, another one. Oh, ah, man. He, you see, the thing is with Jim Carrey, like, I, I read this quote, and the quote says along the lines of, um, it takes as much skill to do what Daniel Day-Lewis does as it does Ooh. to do what Jim Carrey does. And I can come on Jim Carrey in some of his films. If you look at it, yeah, he's very big on screen. Mm. And he's, mm. and he's unpredictable and whatnot. But it takes skill to do that. And then you look at That's someone right. who's just a completely different actor. It also takes skill to do that. But I yes. hold them both in high regard equally because they both have played their skills consistently for many, many years. Um, That's right. Those are a couple of actors that I really admire. Um, and then in the UK, it's mainly like a lot of the theatre actors, man. So many of them that I've just massive fan. I know you've worked with Patrick Some Stewart. My friends, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know you worked with Patrick Stewart. Is that right? Yeah, man. Patrick's great. Yeah, man. Yeah, that, how was how how was working? Because like obviously he's in Star Trek: Next Generation, and now you're in Star Trek: Discovery. Yeah, it, yeah, it that's was, awesome, bro. It it was, man. It was, and that that moment of because when, when I worked with Patrick, it was it was a few years ago. It was um, uh, two thousand and nine, two thousand eight, two thousand and nine, and then um, you know, we um had good rapport. And he's just someone that whenever I used to see him around was just um it's very personable, Patrick, you know, very mm. with you. Like it's 
It's you and him. Yeah. Have the full circle moment of being at the San Diego Comic Con last year. Right. And then green Room. And then, like, Star Trek Discovery cast and um, Picard cast got to meet and greet. And then I saw Patrick, and it was a great embrace and just sharing just like really cool little moments and yes um, there's, there's something that patrick taught me and he said whenever someone says something good about you you respond by saying from your mouth to god's ear you know and wow um, i remembered it and then in the in our discussions when we were catching up uh he said something really kind and i said thank you from your mouth to god's ear so as you sh mm -hmm. share that with me, i share that with yourself and everyone else who's watching thank you Oh, awesome, bro. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, uh, no, I was just saying it's cool. It's a nice um, thing to, to say. Okay. Yes, sir. So, people, any questions for Mr. David Ajala? Because we're very conscious of his time. I wanted to get his rest. 2021 is our big, big, big year. You know, um, any questions, anything you want to put forward? Well, not anything, but like, you know, yeah, put questions forward for Mr. David Ajala. But in the meantime, I'm going to ask him a little bit about his experience on Star Trek Discovery, which is on Netflix right now, people. Let's go and support the team. Support it. Where is it shot, brother? Is it shot in America or Canada? Uh, in Canada. So we In filmed, Canada. Uh, yes. So the first part of um, the opening of the season, the season premiere, was filmed in Iceland, which was wow. an amazing experience. Really, really amazing experience. Um, Sounds the, cold, man. Iceland. Yeah. <laughs> like, have you, have you been to Iceland? My sister, my twin sister lives there, and I've got to yeah. go and visit. Shame on me. I've got to go and visit over there. But every time I hear the word Iceland, I feel, I just want to, it's cold. Corny, you absolutely should, man. <laughs> i got to get them. Nah, nah, it's not that old. And especially because, yeah, it's an amazing Amazing, amazing place. Like you, there's certain parts of Iceland where you can stick the camera anywhere, and like you're good to go because it's so picturesque. Like it, it's and it works perfectly for Star Trek Discovery because there's a lot of parts of Iceland which look very otherworldly, and um, that just worked perfectly. Uh, which is a thousand years into the future. Right. So we had to the audience that we're in unfamiliar territory. Not chill. Um, right. Trek, it's, been, it's been a great, great project to work on. You know, and that's a testament to the creatives behind the scenes, the crew, and the actors. Really, really special bunch of one. Yeah, man. Movie. I love the sister that is the lead actor in it. She, she's got, she's, she's gorgeous to look at. She's uh, acting and so, so is it Son Son Kwea Martin Green? <laughs> I like that, yeah. So Son Kua, Son Kua. <laughs> Son Kua, Son Kua. <laughs> no, 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 I'm playing. No, 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 don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm Sonequa Martin Green. Right. Yeah. Nice, nice, really, nice, really nice, really nice. Awesome. Yeah, really, really um, wonderful, kind, generous, really hardworking, and just has a great attitude towards work. Awesome, awesome. We've got a couple of questions from our listeners today, brother. Yes. One of the questions is from the UK Panther. And the question is, uh, let me just get the question right. Best acting job. What's your favorite best acting job to date, sir? We've just lost volume on you, bro. Sorry. Um, oh yeah, we got you now. We got you. We got, we got audio now. Sorry, off. bro. One night in Miami, done my warehouse. One night in Miami, yeah. We we're Can just losing now? audio a little. Good. We get. Can you hear me now? So yeah, we got you now, brother. Yeah, I can hear you. We can hear you, sir. Yeah, we back. Yeah, we, we, it kind of goes in and out. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can um, everyone hear yeah, David? Uh, can everyone hear David? Okay. Um, well, yeah. One off. Yeah. 
Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Can hear you now. Be one night in Miami. Yeah. Sorry, David. I, I'm kind of losing you audio wise on my yes, side. Yeah. I don't know if this is the inter internet connection. Can everyone hear David? Yeah. Oh, you can't hear him. No, okay. Let, let me, let me... No worries. So, people, we've got Mr. David Ajala, a friend of mine, very special guest on our Sunday's Black Car Speakers Lounge. And we're talking about his career and his favorite actor who he's worked with. So, yeah, hopefully that audio is good. Yeah, it goes yeah. in and out. Hopefully we'll be all right, David. We're going to have to get our own satellite in place. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Yes, sir. My favorite gig, one, it would be One Night in Miami at the Donmar Warehouse. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Next question. I see some questions flying in. Ooh, God. Is there anyone you haven't worked with that you would love to work with? That's from Melly Star One. Um, hey, Mel. Um, who would I like to work with? I would love to work with uh, Denzel Washington. Come on. Uh, come on. Yeah, man. Come on. Just, just like my man. My man. My man. Boom. <laughs> my man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Denzel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Denzel. And I'll have to try and not um, impersonate him while I'm doing a scene with him because that would be a bit clumsy. Can you imagine? <laughs> I'm doing a scene again. I'm like, you imagine man, that. Man. you, 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 you. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm like, you. you he's our guy. He, you know, when you get those impressions. You you know who you are? I'm a police. Like that, that to me. Just King Kong ain't got ish on me. <laughs> <laughs> now Denzel, absolutely, I would, I would love to work. Yeah, Denzel, Mr. Denzel Washington. Um, there's another. You were my favorite part of Supergirl, and you are killing it. And that's coming from Nigel Nigel Scott or Art. Um, everyone said yep. hello and hi. Uh, One Night in Miami, you were it's a fantastic show. Yes. So, yes, brother, you. your heritage, I know your heritage. Your heritage is none other than Nigeria. 100%. Nigeria, my brother. Right. That's right. I love it. Have you, have you been back to Nigeria? Have you visited? I was actually meant to go uh, back uh, earlier this year, but um, because of COVID, that kind of, you know, flipped up plans but i'm hoping mm. i'm god willing to go back um, willing. next year sometime yes sir and you know i want to visit the motherland myself i've got to visit the motherland i've never been you know so i gotta go in this lifetime next year this coming year i think especially as black people knowing your roots come on it's imperative and then i just i think not even just so for black people i think for every yeah. human that lives on this planet i think that's absolutely with the motherland you know Essentially for black people, and then yes, for everyone, absolutely, brother, absolutely, my brother, man. And so, Michael, he's got a question. He said, What advice would you give to up and coming young black actors and actresses? Um, to um, this specifically for black actresses and black actors, and for any actor of any race. Um, you have to be passionate about what you do, curious about the craft, curious mm. about how theatre came about, the essence of theatre, how storytelling started, you know, in like many parts of the world, like Africa specifically, where it was around yes. the campfire. And the griots. they would tell stories because there were no books. So the, Come on. the description that they were given the stories would be so vivid that you remember it so that you can pass the story down from generation to generation to generation. So yes, sir. Is, um, storytelling and our retentive memory from Beautiful. many, many years ago, it was A1, you know, so being able to tap into that, I think it just fleshes out your um, capacity and understanding for the arts. And I think you also yes, have sir. to watch a lot of theatre, Watch a lot of field films, bad films. Absolutely. TV, bad TV. Doesn't matter. Just watch it all and read a lot. Read play. And that's right. Absolutely right, brother. So acting is doing, you would say, yeah? Acting is doing because you can just I don't think you can you can get the best book in the world that teaches acting 
it's not going to teach you how to use tools that you have to act. Come on. That comes from yourself. And I think everyone can act. Everyone has greatness within them. It's not limited to just certain people. You know, some people... So you say anyone and everyone can act? What's that? You say anyone and everyone can act? Absolutely. I think we act without even knowing it. Yo, bro, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Exactly. That's right. We act, we act our roles in our jobs, in our careers. You're absolutely right on the money, my brother. You're absolutely right. You, you know, go. so in terms of what would you, what, if, what would you say that, I know it's been a very rough year and we give thanks to God that we've come through and we, um, we have empathy for all of those who have gone through a rough year. What advice would you, how do you keep yourself up? What do you do to, because I've seen you in shape on the Star Trek, bro. I see you in shape, you know, you get to show some of the money. Mr. G, shoot! <laughs> Flexing them guns there, bro. So, how, what, what would you say to, for one to keep themselves up in this time where it's a lot of, it's cold, it's cold weather outside, the, the, the nights are long and the days are short. How do you keep, how does David Ajala keep his spirits up in this time? How do you keep yourself up, my brother? Yeah, you know, um, very good question. It's a commitment that I'm, I make every day, every morning Come on. when I wake up every day. And some days um, you do better at navigating your way through and keeping spiritually healthy and sound. And some other days are a bit challenging, you know, which is why I have to make that commitment every day. Um, gratitude is important. And I, I don't just say as a thing of, oh, you should, you should be grateful when you can see and find reasons to be grateful it does something for your spirit it's healthy wow. oh it's very instant oh. it's like I, I i speak about being um uh you know I'm, i show gratitude for this thing and then next week i start to feel better you feel better instantly because it does something in come your on. body when you get fed come on brother come on because yeah. i know you to be a very centered brother you know a very God-centered man, a spiritual man, a family man, a man of the people, brother. I know that about you, brother, and I can vouch for you one million percent, you know, and it's so important because especially as actors, we go through so much rejection, you know, yeah. so much rejection, my brother, you know, and, um, you know, uh, the words are the same. You've got to have tough skin is an yeah. understatement. The amount of rejections and all that, but especially with this year, everything changing, everything going online. Mm. Um, what, what would you say to encourage that? I mean, well, a lot of actors are auditioning on, on Zoom. Yeah. You know, how, how do you feel about the changes within the industry now, everything going online and whatnot? How do you see it happening throughout 20, and 2021 and beyond? I think it's, you know, it's, um, it is the new normal, as, as many people have said. And I think it's just about adapting as best as you can. You have to remember the um the new normal if you're doing an audition via a zoom call or whatever um the medium or the avenue within which you share your talent may change but the talent is always the same so just make sure you're always invested in that don't worry too Come much on. logistics of, oh my camera and my light and have it decent for sure but make sure yeah. you're investing all your energy in yourself and your artistry and you know some days you may do well. Some days you may fail miserably. And you know what? There ain't nothing wrong with that. Come on. Whatsoever. There ain't nothing Come wrong with that. It's easy to talk about when you're winning and flying. I've had so many failures. I've what the losses? So, so many. But it didn't stop me. Gee. Come on, brother. And I heard you on another interview, you say you're, you're a very stubborn guy. You're a stubborn man. That's stubborn what in terms of, I don't care, I'm going for it. Ah. Stubborn to keep pushing through, <laughs> to keep pushing through, you know? It's not, it's not a superpower. I don't, I don't try and paint it out to make it sound like I have this superpower ability. No, it's just the audacity of faith to believe. What if it could work out? This is a great quote. And it's very simple. It says, but if I fall, the first person says. And then the second person says, oh, but my darling, what if you fly? And Woo! 
it always touches my Lyric. spirit. Because it's true, Lyric. doubt can only exist when there's faith. Faith can only exist when there's doubt. They go hand in hand. Be at peace with both of them, but put your energy in the right one. Come on. Come on, come on, David. Come on, oh my God. And I know, brother, we're really not going to keep you long, brother. That's I know so there's a, Any other there's a question. Is, how, do how, you how do you stay ready? I think you kind of answered that already, yeah. But yeah, how, how do you stay ready? How do you stay ready? You stay ready by being curious, by being curious and every day doing something towards your dream. Like, sometimes I made them pick up a sheet of paper and then to start you know, reading the sheet of paper and doing an American accent of some sort, you know, might do a New York thing or something like that and go, oh, that's what's up. Oh, I see that. And I'll just be playing around. Just, just literally. Come just on. Playing around with the doing whatever. Like, not overthinking it. Not overthinking it. But always that um, contributes towards you being a better actor. Come yeah. on. Oh, this, this is a great question. When, okay. Yeah, when will you be back on stage? Obviously, with the COVID and with the... Um, Yes, of course. Um, who knows, man? But I tell you what, I, mm. I do look forward to it because I miss theatre massively, mm. massively. But um, whatever that play will be, it will be very, very special because one yes. night was the last play that I did, and that was wow, brother, brilliant play, and I, I, brilliant, loved it. It was flawless, and that was running for two months, three months, wasn't yeah, it? just under two months. Yeah, and that was with the great Kwame directing it, man. We had we we interviewed Kwame a few months ago, man. That that guy is powerful, eh? yeah, powerful, great piece, very Kwame, powerful, bro. Um, Kwame, and then um, who's the director, and then Kemp Powers, who was um the the playwright, just wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. and the movie of One Night Miami is out um next year. And, right. Um. Yeah. There's a film of One Night in Miami. Yeah, yeah, it's out next year on Amazon. That's right, that's right, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, man, and you were perfect yeah. for Jim Brown, bro. Say it again, brother. No, I'm really excited to you watch were... it. Yeah, but you were perfect for Jim Brown, bro. Thank the you, young man. version of Jim Brown, you perfect. You've got the stash going on, yeah, you've got the yeah. eyes. And... Yeah, 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 bro, you perfect, works. man. It's great when it works. It's, it's great when it works, you know, and I'm... Um, yeah, I, yeah, it was. I've seen a few photos of Jim Brown and I look at a few photos of myself. That's the easiest way to see it. And I can see there's where the resemblance is. Symmetry, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, Let's see if there's but, any other questions. Um, have, yeah, have you tried God? <laughs> Jalof, <it? laughs> have you tried Jalof? <laughs> I have, I have tried Ghana Jalof and it was good, but it pales in comparison to Nigerian Jalof. Oh, shots fired. Oh, uh, so David. Is an inspiration. Oh, big up yourself. The Smoke 007. Um, mm. uh, Melissa just said that One Night Miami will be out in January, which is true. Keep pushing mm. to live your dreams. Thank you. And I wish you the same. And all the goodness that you guys have shown me, I send it back to you with um, plenty of abundance. From your, to your mouth, to God's ear. Amen. Is that what? Yes, I love that. I love that. And finally, before you go, I know you worked with the great late Great Heath Ledger on Batman the Dark Knight. Yeah. Um, brother, whew, wow. Yeah. Priceless you. experience to be up close with such a great actor as Heath Absolutely. Ledger. And um, brother, in short, succinctly, how, how was it? How was that experience working with Mr. Heath Ledger, bro? He, he came for me. Like, absolutely changed the game for me. Because when, when I worked with him, I wasn't really too familiar with his work. But um, yes. a few people I was able to speak to to let them know that I was working on the movie, i.e. my agents and then um, a couple of friends, they spoke very highly of Heath Ledger. And I remember being on wow. set, uh, rehearsals with him and just seeing how he conducted himself and his interaction with Christopher Nolan. Like, seeing Heath, he had this massive folder and whenever Christopher Nolan would give him notes, he would always go to his folder and write down these notes like a student. Right. And it's just the way he was just very engaged with everyone. He, he's such a team player. Yes. Yeah. And then I remember being on set now, and it's the first time seeing Heath in full costume, makeup and everything. And he stayed in character throughout, but he had earned that wow. respect character. And I remember Chucky Venn, Charles Venn, Chucky Venn, and Bronson Webb will testify to this. That, because we were all in the scene together. 
when um, Heath would finish his his takes, it would be really quiet on set because we're watching and thinking, this is amazing. It, it yeah. feels almost sacrilegious to make small mm. talk. Right. Done. And then he became aware of it. And then just to break the tension in the room during takes, he would do these terrible, terrible party tricks. Awful party tricks. And he would do them <laughs> knowing that it'll tickle everyone to make us laugh. I've never come across such a wonderful being, wonderfully talented individual who was so mm. curious about people and work. Like he, mm. he changed the game for me. Amazing guy. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. And as students of acting, we, I, I've heard that as well. You, he had a notebook. He took notes. And that's something I learned by, while attending uh, drama classes and drama workshops. It's good to take notes. And yeah. it just shows you your head is in the game, brother. So I heard that you got a great Heath Ledger Joker uh, voice impression, my bro. I heard <laughs> you was you, on point, bro. I heard it, bro. I heard it. I've been doing my, my research, brother. <laughs> ha, ha, he, oh, ho. And I thought my jokes were bad. Want to know how I got these scars? Want to know well, my scars? Well, my father was a drinker and a fiend. One night he comes home a little crazier than usual. He runs to the kitchen and gets a knife to defend herself. He doesn't like that, not one bit. So, me watching, he comes over to me with a knife, laughing while he does it. He sticks the blade in my mouth and says, why so serious? Yeah! The guy, the guy bodied it, man. He bodied it. He, he bodied it. He bodied it, bruh. Oh, 100%. And people forget he's Australian. He's an Australian um, actor. Right. You know? Amazing, brother. Amazing, amazing. And so does Michael Jar White. Michael Jar White, lovely guy as well. Martial artist. Yeah. Uh, raw and actor, you know, he was on the dark night as well. Absolutely. Awesome. I just to make sure I wasn't forgetting any questions. Did yes, sir. Well, yeah, any final question before our brother relinquishes the Instagram? Any final questions, brother? We're so grateful for your time, bro. You know, so grateful. I think we may have lost hey, sound question. again. Question. Oh, there you are. Pleasure. Bro, yes, sir. Yes, King. Yeah. You froze. You froze him back. Yeah. yeah. Can you see me now? Can you hear me? Just lost the audio a little bit. It might be the internet connection on my end. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Mr. David Ajala, Hollywood superstar actor. I can hear you. Can you hear me, brother? My son. I'll see you. Yeah. But look, just going to sign out. Can I can hear you. Can you hear me? You can hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Brother, I'm not going to take any more of your time. I want you to get... You look fresh, man. You look fresh still. You look fresh. But I'm not going to take any more of your time, my brother. You know, bro, yeah. I just want to say thank you. you. Can you hear me? You can hear me now. Yes, sir, I can hear you, sir. I want to say thank you. And everyone, how you do that thing? Just that thing with yeah. the fingertip. Like, how do you do that? You just do it so well, brother. The, <laughs> the Star Trek thing. I, 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 can, I can't hear you, my yeah. bro. Oh, oh, man, you got it on point. Pleasure. You got Pleasure. it on point, man. everyone. Bless. Thank you, Mr. Dave. We'll, we'll holler, yeah? I'll talk. Definitely, we'll talk. Thank you, brother. Bless. That was Mr. David Ajala, everyone. Big up, everyone. Hugs from Uruguay. Big up. Uh, I know Lucas Soroso. Excuse me for mispronouncing your name. Big up, Melissa. Big up, Stanton Lane. Big up, everyone that is tuned in onto Black Car Speakers Lounge, people. That was Mr. David Ajala. Go and peep game. Go and peep game. Netflix. Netflix. Star Trek Discovery. Also, he's on Supergirl. He's also Dark Knight as well. Uh, Kidhood and Brotherhood. 
Falling Water, which was the American TV series. Black Box, another American TV series. What else, people? What else has our friend and our guest for today been in? Many things. And he's in, and he's in Link's advert as well, voiceover. And I have to say, on the record, big up, big up Joan, listening from Toronto, Canada. Big you up. Everybody, please follow, like, and subscribe this platform. Please visit our YouTube channel as well, where we have many illustrious guests like Mr. David Ajala, whom we have interviewed, the great Kwame, who directed One Night in Miami. You'll find his interview on our YouTube platform on the Black Film Institute. That is Black Film Institute uh, YouTube. Please follow, like, and subscribe to that page. We, we aim to have a lot more great guests like David, and we have a lot more other guests on our Black Film Institute channel, YouTube. Please follow, like, and subscribe to that one on YouTube and obviously to Black Cast Speakers Lounge. Big up, Bacola. Anyone else? Anyone international who's joined us today? Big up, big up, big up, big up. Big up all of you, man. And thank you again to Mr. David Ajala, who literally just stepped off the plane. Big up, Mr. Kevin Official Lane. Big up, Mr. Kevin. You know, all of these heavyweights, man, that are joining us and throughout this year. Um, next week, Sunday, is our last uh, podcast for the 2020 before we head into 2021. The blessings have just begun. 2021. Yo, that's the year when we win or we have won. That, literally that. Please, people, play back this podcast and receive those pearls of wisdom coming from Mr. David Ajala. Is there anyone here who would like to jump up in on the room real quick before we relinquish this platform? Feel free, feel welcome. We are here for the next few moments, or I won't be taking too much of your time. I know you have to go and eat the jollof rice, the pounded yam, the rice and peas and jerk chicken, whatever we do on a Sunday. People, go and check out some new stuff that's on Netflix as well. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, I watched that. Starring the great Viola Davis and, Chad, and the late great Chadwick Boseman, Boseman. Awesome performance, great performances. I keep bigging this one up as well on Amazon Prime platform. Love, craft, country. Yo, yo. Uh -uh. You're not my friend if you haven't watched that yet. Go and watch that. Go and watch Love, craft, country, man. It is awesome. It's great. And once again, please go watch Star Trek. Discovery, which is on Netflix, available to watch, starring Soniqua, Martin Green, and David Ajala. Yeah? So anyone, love to everyone. Give you all up. Peace. Thank you to our guest, my friend David Ajala, and everyone who's joined our platform from all over the world. Follow, like, and subscribe to Black Film Institute. Follow, like, and subscribe to Black Car Speakers Lounge. This one right here as we aim to bring you another illustrious guest next week, Sunday, 5 p.m. Peace. Love you.